Hey everyone, I'm Ultimate 456, you're the Ultimates, and welcome to episode 8 of Let's Platinum Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice. Okay, let's uh, do the time warp, no, I'm just kidding, uh, let's go into acquire skills. So we have three more skill points, um, now i just got to work out which one I want. <sighs> which one is it? Oh right, it's this one here. Okay, <laughs> I was like... I, I couldn't remember which one it was. Okay, so we've got, um, we've now got the Shinobi Arts and we've also got Prosthetic Arts. Um, and each one has their, their uses. So the good thing is that we have the Mercury counter. That is important. We'll, we'll, we will need that very soon. Um, and then in terms of the Prosthetic Arts, one very important attack that we need is the Grappling Hook Attack. So we're gonna get this in just a second here. Acquires Grappling Hook Attack, Shinobi Martial Art. Uses the Grappling Hook to launch oneself uh, at an enemy and use that momentum to perform a rolling sword attack. The Shinobi Prosthetic is the perfect tool for combining movement and attack into into one, ensuring no movement is wasted. R1 during grapple hook movement, uh, grappling hook attack, uses the forward use the forward momentum of your landing to perform a powerful sword attack. Now, when it says R1 during grapple hook movement, they really mean it because as soon as you press L2 and he goes into the grappling hook animation, um, pressing R1 at any stage will cause him to do the attack. Even if you leave it to the very end, it does it. So it's very useful. So I'm just going to learn this right now. What are these two again? Okay, these these two are pr pretty much useless right now. <laughs> Don't worry about those. Chasing Slice, also good. Acquires Shinobi Martial Art Chasing Slice. A Shinobi Martial Art that allows one to perform a forward dashing sword slice after using certain prosthetic tools, allowing one to close distance on enemies instantly. Ap applicable prosthetic tools. Loaded Shuriken, Shinobi Firecracker, and the third one we don't have access to yet. Um, so it says after using certain prosthetic tools, press R1 to perform the chasing slice. Take a leap forward and perform a wide slicing attack. Applicable prosthetic tools, loaded Shuriken after throwing, and Shinobi uh, Firecrackers after throwing. So let's grab that as well with one skill point left. So we have mid -air, mid air prosthetic tool and fang and blade. These are pretty good as well. Um, fang and blade especially. The prosthetic tool mid air, eh, it can go either way. Um, there might be something really good later on that we can use it for, but fang and blade is pretty good too. Um, it's basically a chasing slice, but for the loaded axe and two other prosthetic tools that we'll find later. And we have one left. Hmm. We don't really need any of these others right now, so I'm just gonna hold off on using that last point. Uh, I think, yeah, I already rested up. All right, before we continue, uh, oh, well, first let's read this. Prosthetic follow-up attack. Special sword attacks can be performed immediately after using prosthetic tools. R2 to use the prosthetic tool and R1 right afterward to perform the follow-up attack. Controls for follow-up attacks can be viewed in the equipment menu. Okay, so I'll just demonstrate. So, so very quick, very strong, very powerful. Strong and powerful the same word, but basically. Um, okay. So this is uh, Hanbei again. Now let's... Yep. Uh, Undying Samurai Training, Mercury Counter Unlocked. Okay, so let's learn that uh, training right now. Shikarabamai. Alright. Um, a shinobi can perceive incoming thrust attacks and counter them by stepping... and counter them by stepping on the enemy blade. Known as Mercury Counter, this is a powerful, if risky move that deals more posture damage than a regular deflect. Use Mercury Counter to perform three death blows. Now the problem is, it doesn't really tell you exactly how to do it. It just says uh, circle as the thrust lands. Basically what you do is you wait until the kanji symbol appears above the enemy's head and as the, as the attack is coming towards you, you press circle. Don't press left, don't press right, don't press forward, don't press back, press circle. Um, like, uh, don't press those directions while pressing circle. You could probably press forward and circle, I think it still works, but just press circle and you will perform the Mercury counter. Okay, and they give you three three chances to do it. So there we go. It's got about, I would say, five to ten frame window. I'm, I'm not really sure. It might be more than that. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not good, like, when people say, like, frame perfect tricks, I'm assuming they're using, like, uh, outside tools to to kind of work that out because um, you can't there's no way you could eyeball it that would be ridiculous um, but it seems to be about like 5 to 10 if I had to guess um, okay let's travel to the Ashina outskirts um, wall stairway so this part's tricky because now we're actually at a point that 
regardless of which path we choose, we have to face off against the boss. Um, I'm going to go this way first uh, because, hmm, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but I guess I just want to take out the Chained Ogre just because I feel like it's a, we've got the Flame Vent now so we can, we can actually do, you know, we, we can actually beat him. Um, not that we couldn't before, but same, same style, or same deal. We have something to help us, so may as well use it. Alright, now the only downside to doing this is that um, I have a skill point that I could use, but I want to hold off on using it. Um, so hopefully I don't die, but if I do, things will be okay. Uh, let's pop the flame vent on. Um, we don't actually need the loaded axe for this, but I, I'll keep it. And we don't really need the shuriken for this either, but I'll keep it. Um, let's get some preparations down here. So we're going to throw on the oil. We've got seven of them, so that's pretty good because we want to douse him in a bit more flames. Anything else? Uh... Nah, that's fine. I've never used Fistful of Ash against him. I guess I can try that. See how that works. Because sometimes that does actually work. Don't worry about using the Akko Sugar to do more damage. You really want to protect yourself. Well, I mean, if you're confident in fighting him, then you could use it. But yeah, I don't know. Um, also, beware of the enemy uh, to the top left. Try and get his attention and get him to come down. So let's uh, let's pop some oil on him. Flame burn him. So he's burning. Hit him a couple of times. Okay, now he's going to try and perform a grab attack. Grab attacks cannot be deflected. There is no way to avoid taking serious damage once grabbed. But if one jumps or sprints away, grabs can be avoided. Some grabs, some grabs can also be avoided with a well-timed step dodge. X and uh, the thumbstick, left thumbstick to jump in the desired direction. Circle and left thumbstick to sprint. Uh, circle to step dodge. So I'm just going to run away from it. Okay, see that um, thing? Grapple and then press R1 to perform that grapple attack. And then you can get another attack in as well. Nice. Let's oil him up again. Burn. One, two. Let's use that L1 attack to do many, 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 many attacks. Okay. Oh, I don't know how I didn't get grabbed there. He's gonna do a kick. Okay, so we're doing pretty well. He, he might. I think he's the first enemy that we faced off against that has. Let me try a fistful bash. So every time he does like a grab attack, you can do a grapple there. Pretty good. Okay. He might be the first enemy that has two... No, actually, he's not. He has two health bars, so you have to defeat him once and then defeat him again. Let him do some attacks. Oh, that does work. Cool. Okay, that's number one. One more health bar to go. Boil him up. Flame bed. Do your... I can't remember what it's called. Okay, that hurt. It's fine. Healing Gourd. Yeah, watch out for that drop. The thing with him is his attacks are quite heavily telegraphed. He's slow. Um, but you if you get greedy, you can lose very quickly. So just, yeah, attack a couple times. He has that stagger animation there. This is going okay. Try and let him, like... You know, like when he's chasing, you got to kind of walk forward to... Fade out an attack. Ooh. Ooh. There you go. He had a three. A triple there. Gonna do that. Let's oil him up again. Another flame vent. Thank god that went off. One, two, three, and then throw in that attack. Kinda wanna use the Nice. And it's over. Oh, I got very lucky there at the end to get that stagger. Nice. I only got hit once. Pretty good. 105 experience, and we get our second prayer bead. Um, a loose prayer bead, offering four of them at a sculptor's idol, will increase maximum vitality and posture. Currently, the wolf has two beads in his possession. And we also get a skill, Shinobi Medicine Rank 1, a latent skill that increases the healing effects of recovery items. Medicinal knowledge is vital for a shinobi's survival. Receiving wounds in battle is inevitable. The only way to learn such techniques is to be gravely injured time and time again by worthy opponents. So, yeah, now our... Um, our gourd will uh, heal more health, which is really good. Here is our first um, example of a spear-wielding enemy, and basically the Makiri counter is going to help us here. So he'll do it immediately. It should. There. Circle. R1. All done. 
Very simple. He's just kind of like the sitting there, basically waiting for you to, to go fight him. I don't think there's anything here. No, it's just kind of like a little section here to, yeah, you can't really, I don't think you can skip. Like you might be able to find a way up there, but yeah. It doesn't help you skip the, the enemy. If it wasn't actually, I'd never actually got to show this off, but um, after defeating the Chained Ogre, we can actually now grapple up to that uh, part up here. Um, if we hadn't defeated him, or when you get up here, no matter where you go, like I was standing next to him, but if I tried going further, he would just attack me and this area would be blocked off by like that misty fog that you see um, a lot of From Software games have. What about up here? Hmm. I love that. Never actually went up here. Or at least I don't remember going up here. Okay, cool. Um, okay, now where do I want to go? Hmm. Because the thing is, there's no other... There's no other... Um, well, there is, but it's a little far to get to. No, it's not that far. I'm just trying to think. Um... Yeah, we'll come back, I think. I think we'll come back. We'll grab this one, at least. This is the Nightjar Monocular. Uh, a bamboo tube used to see distant objects. While shinobi already have good vision, looking through this tube with one eye enables one to see even further. The Nightjar Ninja serve Ishin Ashina, guarding the rooftops, rooftops of Ashina Castle. Their sharp eyes on the lookout for any would-be trespassers. Not much escapes the eyes of a Nightjar. All right, and with it, we can actually have a quick peek at this battlefield. Uh, before we leave, let's get rid of those. Okay. So all that allows you to do is like basically zoom in. Oh, okay, you can zoom in further. That's cool. I don't actually know that. <laughs> uh, so there's a boss. Um, there's another enemy standing nearby. There's one there. That guy over there, he's got, it's hard to see, but he's got like a gong and he's basically, he's not, he doesn't fight you. He's not hostile, but he rings the bell to warn everyone. So that kind of sucks. There's an enemy there, as I said. Um, I think it's hard to see, but there's, well, you can't see it actually, but there's another one. Oh, too far. Yeah, and see, he almost noticed me. So there's another enemy behind that wall, and then there's one there, and I think there's an, a second one behind that wall. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's a little full in this area, and I haven't really, like, I haven't figured out exactly how to do this properly, but I just had an idea. I will try and remember it when I come back to do this section. So for now, let's head off to, um, back to the Hirata estate. So if you, if you don't, you know, if you're not comfortable fighting the, the Chained Ogre yet, or if you can't beat him, then come back to the estate and we'll try a different boss. Uh, I, I think the, this boss that we're going to fight now is actually harder, but you know, it depends on, I guess, how you, what you're good at and what you're not so good at. So yeah. Uh, glad I was able to get through that. I haven't, like I said, I haven't played in like a week. Uh, I've been, I'm recording this episode, the previous three, and the next three, hopefully in the same se session. Um, so I'm a little rusty because I haven't played in like a week. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, we've got quite a few. Okay, that was a little follow up attack thing. Perfect for um, Bowman. I'm not going to reach that one. <laughs> that never gets old. Those guys apparently are somewhat aware of my presence, but not enough to actually do anything about it. Notice I've got a lot of um, money right now, so I am playing a little bit risky with how much um, how much of that I've got. But we should be okay. Actually, you know what? I might, just thinking about it, I actually might go use that but you know what I might do? I might quickly not die. This is actually fine. <laughs> I'll demonstrate the power of the loaded axe. We'll get a bit more experience and then we'll fight them again to get some more experience. Oops. Oh, thank God. All right, so these guys have wooden shields and how you fight them is use the loaded axe, get close, press R2, split, split their shields and press R1 immediately. And they generally don't do anything, like they do, if you try and attack them, they will block like every attack with their shield. Uh, it just won't do anything. Um, yeah, let me quickly do this while I talk. I'm actually going to use the Homeward Idol. I should really try and keep that on most times. Uh, yeah, this one here. 
Uh, maybe the last. Uh, it doesn't matter which one. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, so with those guys with the wooden shields, mostly they don't attack you. Um, if you stay like near them too long, they do. And if you time your loaded axe press at the wrong time, that can cause issues as well. Um, but, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, you can take them out rather easily with just an R2 swing and an R1. Okay, um, so what I want to do here is I actually want to travel one more time. Did I learn a skill? No, oh. I mean, get a skill point? Nope, by a little bit. I want to go back here, because I want to quickly talk to Anayama, and then if he hasn't got anything that I can buy, I'm going to go to the memorial mob that I uh, reached the first time. Because now I have like a lot of money <laughs> and I don't want to waste it. Even, I'm just thinking like I'm probably going to have to waste it. Well, no, I'll only waste it if I die. Um, okay, so let's talk to Anayama. Because now, you know, we know a little bit more about what happened. You know, we have that information. So I think we can actually do something here. Let's find out. Here we go. Okay, so he has got some more. He has got some stuff now. Ah, oh, beautiful. Oh, he already has this. That's weird. I didn't actually know he got this that early. Okay, so the Phantom Kunai is um, well, it's more for later. But basically, it's a material that's going to help us um, obtain uh, an upgrade later for one of our uh, prosthetics. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, it costs a fortune though. What I'm going to do is I'm going to purchase all five Litecoin purses, because like I said before, um, the Litecoin purses cost 110, right? Um, and they sell for 100. So basically you pay a 10% fee uh, on each Litecoin purse, and you lose you lose 10 sen every time you purchase one. But if you die, you don't lose anything, because you can sell these back, and uh, that is very useful. Oh, hang on. Did he say, by the way? Ah, yes. I skipped that by accident. He said he's going to let us know something about the business. なんだ。Okay, so he wants to know what it is that Ashina Ninja or Shinobi want. Um, and we, we, it'll take us some time to get to that point, but we will be able to find that out eventually. That is how he almost noticed me because I wasn't using the... Um, the Gachin Sugar, and then these guys almost noticed me as well. <laughs> I'm trying to like use my money, but I just realized I'm like fighting all these guys. Ow. There we go. I mean, I'm, tr I'm not trying to use my money, but I'm trying to like, save it. Okay, good. Uh, let's jump up there, jump up there, jump up there, if I can. Alright, how many of you got to sell me? Because this is the only chance I have. <laughs> Three, okay, that's not bad. Alright, so I've knocked it down to 481. That's fine, it's not the end of the world if I die. 13, so I can get up to seven, 1700. Alright, um, one more time with the Homewood Idol. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to, I think both of those are exactly the same. Um, alright, in order to save time, I'm just gonna go back to the, um, I'll cut to the Hirata Estate, so I'll be right back. Alright, back at the Hirata Estate, let's go. Okay, I wanna do this quick though, so I don't wanna have to use one of my... Come on. Yes, just in time. Uh, gotcha. There you go. You can also leave like a little delay as well. Oh, I just realized I should learn a skill. <laughs> Oops. 
Uh, I'm gonna fight them again. Uh, I might choose to skip them this time. Oh wait, no. I'm, I don't have to fight them again. Because uh, it's a choice as to whether you do the thing. Um, oh, there's like nothing I can learn really. That's good. Maybe I should learn these two. Actually, I'll learn this one. And then we'll go for Shinobi Eyes. Shinobi Eyes is a pretty good ability too. It's basically Mercury Counter, but it does even more. Like, it, it makes it more powerful. So that's very good. Um, okay, cool. Let's go. Yeah, we should have enough. Yeah, we'll have enough time to at least take out this next... Uh, it's basically a mini boss of sorts. Whee! Look at him run. Running like a ninja. Take him out. This is the enemy I hate fighting most, probably. Because he's kind of unpredictable. Like, you can. He, his stagger is a little weird. Hard to remember exactly how he fights. Yep. Perfect example. Alright, I'll pell it up and. Okay, here we go. Two, three, get rid of him. Switch to the loaded axe. E po. E po. Beautiful. That went rather well. All right. Now I haven't. Like I tried this so many times, and I could not come up with like an absolute perfect method of doing this. Um, but I just thought of something actually, that might work. I'm going to try. Get rid of that for a second. Let's try another Gachin Sugar. See if this will give me the ability to dispatch this guy without being seen. Aha. Uh -huh. I love how I figure stuff out when I'm playing. Like the actual guide. <laughs> okay, so I might be seen here, but I'm gonna go here, get this guy. The other guy's gonna see me. The boss is going to be notified. Here he comes. But now all I've got left is this guy. Who's worthless. And now I've only got the boss. Alright, here he comes. Countering thrust attacks. Thrust attacks cannot be blocked, but they can be deflected. The Mercury counter skill also counters thrust attacks, and performing it successfully will deal greater posture, da posture damage than a normal deflect. So we learnt about this a little bit before. The Shinobi Hunter Enshin of Mizen. Oops, timed it wrong. Please don't kill me. <gasps> I'm not dead, I'm not dead. I have a little bit of health. <sighs> I've got to run. So watch out for his... Wow, that really heals like nothing. Okay, he did a sweep attack there. There we go, Mercury County. You can see how much posture damage that took. And again, this will take out his first health bar. Doing okay so far. Let me move positions a little bit. Good. Badly timed. I'm gonna run here, do a pellet. Maybe the. Oh no, I shouldn't have had a second one, I don't think they stack. Ah, no, I died. Okay, but we now have a new. Um, we have a. Um, what do you call? Huh? Wait. Oh, right, okay. So this is one of the game's main mechanics, and that is to resurrect from a death. We have new bars in the bottom left hand corner. Resurrection. The Divine Heir's blood grants the ability to return from the dead using resurrective power. One charge is always restored by resting at a sculptor's idol. Killing enemies restores additional charges. Resurrection becomes unusable immediately after using it, but killing enemies will make it available again. Okay. I hope I don't lose this because... Oh! Damn it, he's... Come on. Oh, thank god. <laughs> I was very close to losing that. Damn. Alright, the third prayer bead. Hooray! I need one more. There's the fog that I was talking about, that mist, misty fog that dissipates after you defeat the enemy. Alright, so I'm glad that I didn't die there. Uh, well, at least twice, that is. Um... He's 
quite tough. As you can see, like I, I screwed up a few times there and, and he, uh, let him, I let him get the be better of me in one or two occasions, uh, on one or two occasions. And that's mainly because the, the biggest issue is the kanji symbol. Um, it, it can mean that he's going to perform a thrust attack uh, that you can Mercury counter, but he can also perform a sweep attack, which you basically have to jump over. Um, and even if the kanji symbols are different, which I've never sat down and actually looked to see if that's the case, um, in combat, you're not going to be able to really notice that. You're only going to react to the fact that there's a kanji symbol in, on the screen. So um, that's what makes it so hard. But I think my little strategy there of using the Gachin Sugar um, to give you kind of like the information or like the background on that, I never, ever, ever managed to complete this area in as a perfect a way as I did than what I just did there. Like, because the way it would happen is I would always have like one or two enemies to deal with while I was fighting this guy. But using the Gachin Sugar and taking the path that I did worked really well. So. Uh, I'd say if you want to lessen the difficulty in this area, definitely go and go for that because I think that worked out rather well. All right, so well, at least we, we took out two bosses today. That's pretty cool. And I uh, got to another sculptor idol, the Bamboo Thicket Slope. We didn't die, so that's fantastic as well. And now just quickly before I go, I want to quickly say, so the bottom left-hand corner, you got two symbols. I have the ability to, ability to resurrect once, and then my second uh, node will allow me to do that again, but I have to fill it up. And there's a little bit of confusion as to how that works. I'll try my best to explain it as we go because I'm not entirely sure myself um, exactly how that works. But I'm going to try my best to explain it as we go. Um, okay, but for now, I want to thank you all for watching episode 8 of Let's Platinum Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. My name is Ultima456. You're the Ultimates. And I'll see you next time.